Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Live at the Whiskey Lounge. Uh, it is so great to see a really nice crowd out here on a cold night. Thank you for braving the elements. You're here on a, every night here is a great night, but you're here on a particularly great night to hear three wonderful all-stars of, I'm sorry, what? Louder? <laughs> You're here to see three real uh, all-stars of Chicago jazz, and uh, so I'm thrilled to bring them to you. Uh, I thought I would step up here just uh, before the uh, artists come and join us, tell you just a little bit about the, about the series, about the evening, what you can expect, and, uh, and what to look for in the future. Um, this is, uh, I, I started this series back in March. I've sort of lost track now. I say this every week, and I, you know, one of these weeks I'm actually going to check to double, to make sure, but I believe this is our 36th show here uh, in a row. We've been doing it since March. March 20th was our first one. So we've been doing it every Thursday. And we really do this, um, uh, try to make it so that, that it's much like a concert you would have in your living room or, or, or something like that where you can get right up close. By the way, these tables right up close are open if anybody wants to get that close. Um, but uh, we want to make it so that it is a very intimate experience both for the performers and for the audience. Uh, the, uh, you'll see what looks like some superfluous technology here. It actually isn't. We have a lot of microphones, uh, and the reason for the microphones is that we do a full-on multi-track recording of every show, just like we would do in the recording studio, uh, and that is for our arch archival purposes. The musicians have access to that after the fact so that they can use that for their purposes. And then with these little guys are actually cameras, and we do a live streaming webcast of every one of these shows. So uh, if there's a particular week that you can't be here, uh, but we'd like to see what's going on, you can actually tune in live, and you can see, I forgot to bring my iPad up with me, but I was gonna show you. Um, we're streaming live right now, so uh, it's at a short delay back when, uh, so it's about 45 seconds in the past, in the future, whatever, whichever way you're thinking of it. Um, yes, Gina? You took the words out of my mouth. So it used to be sort of convoluted a way to get to the, uh, to the stream, and we've actually simplified that greatly. If you see these little cards, and you're welcome to take these, by the way, um, Steve Rashid presents. That's the I am Steve Rashid. This is, and it, I am presenting, in case you haven't figured that out. Um, Steve Rashid presents .com. If you just go there, Steve Rashid presents .com, and there's a, there's a lot, it's like watch live. There's a button there, you press the button, and it takes you to a stream, and you press play, and you're going. So uh, you're welcome to do that from a, from a computer, from a mobile device, whatever you like. Um, we do, as I say, do this every week. We won't be here next week, next Thursday. So you are welcome to come next week, but you'll be standing out in the cold. I'll be in Wisconsin eating turkey. So, uh, but but uh, please do take these cards with you if you like. Um, it will tell you what's coming up, and not next week, of course, but the week after we have the great John Mulder and Ken Hall, a great guitarist with a vibes player. It's really, really going to be fantastic. Uh, and then we have, uh, and on and on, we've got a special uh, thing with Bobby Broom and Dennis Carroll coming up. It's what we're doing with, uh, in conjunction with WDCB. That's actually on a Wednesday night. We're recording that here for a later broadcast. So we're starting to do some, some work in some uh, uh, radio connection along with, uh, along with these live shows. Okay, um, I'm about to get out of the way here. Uh, again, we thank you for your kind attention. We are recording, so please feel free to talk to your neighbors, but do keep it down to a low low volume so that we don't uh, interrupt the recording and distract the musicians. I hope you have a great time. We have three incredible musicians, as I said in my, my newsletter. By the way, I do have a weekly newsletter. Again, on the card, there's information about that I won't be coming out for. And the fact that you're getting all three of them uh, for one price is really kind of incredible. Uh, it is. Can you believe it? I mean, everybody from Elvis to Sarah Vaughan. Um, and, and Dennis Luxon uh, has been around town, has played overseas for the State Department and played with Chet Baker. So these are real, real uh, heavyweights of Chicago jazz. Um, I'm going to stop talking about them and let you hear them. I will come up a little later and talk to them, so uh, we'll have a little conversation with them later. But for now, how about it for Dennis, Ron, and Jim? We are thrilled to have them. Thanks for coming, and thanks for supporting live music. It's the fact that you're here that we can do this. So, and spread the word. Spread the word.
Thanks a lot, Steve. <laughs> Take your time. Um, you know, I, when I started playing the bass, I, I wanted to play bass so I could be, be in the back of the band and kind of hide behind my bass and never have to talk. Now look what happened. <laughs> I'm talking. So um, anyway, our first number, we're playing a song from a, um, one of my first jazz records is a Thad Jones Mel Lewis record, which I can't remember the name of that LP. What was that? I can't remember. Um, yeah, maybe they can look it up. Yes. Yeah, I, I had the same one. You know the one? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, the white cover, the, you know, the Beatles white cover. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the Beatles white cover. The white, white album? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a song uh, written by Thad Jones called Three and One. Not three and one, like the oil, but three and one. Okay, here it goes. Thank you. 
I should thank you also all for coming out on such a cold night. But as the old expression goes that I like to repeat this time of year, uh, there's no such thing as bad weather. There's only bad.
Thank you so much. Brigas nunca mais. All out there in TV land. Oh, actually, no, it's not TV. I guess it would be uh, like low in laptop land, maybe. <laughs> Here's the Duke Ellington tune um, Ron picked out to play called uh, Black Butterfly.
Thank you. What a beautiful tune. Not played often enough, I don't think. Oh, thanks a lot. Um, so uh, next on our little song list here is um, an Irving, Irving Berlin tune uh, written in 1936. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Sorry. I'm taking that out of your check. <laughs> Night in 1936, Irving Berlin. Uh, it's from a show called Follow the Fleet. I guess it's a Navy theme. Um, I'm most familiar with this tune from listening to the Sinatra recording, uh, one of my favorite recordings of it. Let's face the music and dance. Tell we had extensive rehearsals before this, can't you? Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Thank you. Irving Berlin. How are we doing on time, T Steve? Yeah, keep going. <laughs> oh, shucks, thanks. <laughs> Whatever you think. Um, let's see. Yeah, maybe one more and then come up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then it says put out the tip jar because the next tune is. Uh, what? Yeah, it's okay. okay. You just, or if you don't want to, that's fine. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, brother, can you spare a dime? Uh, written in the, of course, like around the 30s, right, you know, during the Depression. Uh, of course, I looked on the internet to read about the song, you know, the Wik Wikipedia. Uh, there's a funny story about it's written by Yip Harburg and Jay Gorney, <coughs> who were a songwriting team until um, Yip took up with uh, Jay's wife. <laughs> and that was the end of their partnership. <laughs> he married her, too. He was a communist, too. Oh, he was a communist, too. Oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's more de deeper and deeper. Uh, brother, can you spare a dime? Uh, we're not going to play the verse, but uh, maybe when you go home, yeah. We don't know the verse, but it's it's uh, got some interesting lyrics. We can dedicate this to the, uh, maybe to the 99%. Uh, let me find my music. I don't know this one. Oh. Oh. Wow, that's official looking. All right. Kind of agree on a tempo. Anybody got a suggestion? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> One side builder. There? Or it's faster. It's a little slow. The slow? That's, that's a depression song, so we don't want to do it too slow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where do you want it? Good. Now we've agreed on a tempo. <laughs> And a key, C minor. <laughs> Ready? One, two, one.
With the uh, inflation, that would be, uh, buddy, can you spare a $10 bill, maybe? Yeah, a <laughs> $1.10. ten. i am going to come over here between you guys. So okay. I've been told by my director that I have, have to be careful about my blocking. <laughs> uh, there, is that good? Am I good? Am I good? No, I'm, okay. I'm on my mark. <laughs> Spotlight's hitting me. Um, Gosh, this is wonderful. I, you know, I, I always look forward to this moment when I get up to, to chat with the musicians, but I really don't want you to stop, so I was hoping you'd just kind of keep playing while we talk. <laughs> um, a friend of mine uh, said, um, was telling me once about uh, working in the recording studio when you, you're always sort of on that delicate dance between something that is nice in the moment but, is, has, but stands up to repeated listening, and we're always trying to get something kind of tr working towards perfect, and she always says, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be wonderful. Um, and uh, damn it, you guys are doing both. <laughs> Seriously, it's just, it's so, um, everything is so right on and, uh, and it's also wonderful. Uh, it really is, isn't it? Uh, you guys met in Champaign? 
all of you? Or, or give, tell me a little background about, or, well, first of all, this, this, you, you all have been friends for a long time, but, but is this the first time that this, this trio has played together as a trio? No, I think we uh, for sure played at the, the hotel quite a few times, right? And maybe before that, I don't remember. Yeah, occasionally a gig here and there. Yeah. Oh, Dennis says we played at a nursing home in Downers Grove. <laughs> I was there! <laughs> was that with Chet Baker? <laughs> no, but we met, uh, we all met in Champaign. I think I met Ron, he, I was uh, attending summer youth music at Champaign-Urbana where I grew up. And uh, Ron, I think, was teaching there. And I think I met him probably 1972, maybe, something like that. Wow. Yeah. Oh, in high school. I was in high yeah. school. That's right. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So you guys, you you. So you met Ron when you were in high school, and then the two of you. Oh, I met Dennis. Uh, he lived in Champaign. He started out as a. You were an engineering major, right? Actually, could you could you go on, Mike? Oh. Flip that. There you go. Yes, that did not last very long. <laughs> <laughs> He's an engineering major. He decided to uh, not make so much money and become a musician. Yeah, and you, know, you know, the thing is, when I went to school, you know, they had orientation week. Yeah. And one, you know, and I was, you know, enrolled as a civil engineering major, but that ended when I heard the U of I jazz band play during ah. the orientation week. And it was like, okay. I mean, I was never a music major down there, but I, you know, I was never a, an engineering major. In and were you, were, you, were you already pretty serious about the piano at that point? Or, or did you consider yourself serious? I mean, was it a real interest for you at that point? Uh, music was an interest. Yeah. Yes. Was I serious about it? <laughs> we're pretty heavy instruments. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, I was into music. I don't know if I was ever serious about piano. I don't know. Uh-huh. I see. Did you, um, was, was jazz the first interest, the mu first music that interested you, or? No, uh, I think the animals. The animals, wow, yeah. Eric Burden, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. And what about, what, 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 what about jazz turned your head or made you want to pursue that? Because at a pretty young age, you were, you were touring, right? Oh, no, not really at a young age, but, um, no, when I was in, in, in uh, junior high and high school, I, a friend of mine got me involved in like rock bands that he was uh -huh. doing. And, and that's you know, when we were, we were really into the animals. And sort of living close to Chicago, it's, you know, looking back at it now, it's interesting because I was really into all these blues-influenced groups. Sure. You know, English. English oh, English music, blues you know, groups you know, <laughs> rather than Chicago blues. listening to all the people <laughs> right, from right, Chicago. Right. You know, <laughs> Who would have died to listen that. to the stuff that you could have walked up and heard, right? Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. But I didn't know it was there. Right, right. Um, no, what, uh, and this friend of mine who got me involved in those groups, his father was a big uh, Louis Armstrong fan. And of course. So, you know, in high school, I was listening to a lot of, you know, Jimmy Smith and, and different things. I, you know, I, a couple of the, my, the first albums I remember getting from, like, the, the record club. I mean, there were records back then, and a right. record, you know, Columbia House Records or whatever, you know, sent away for a couple jazz albums that looked interesting. So I got, you know, Art Tatum, Piano Starts Here, and The Best of Thelonious Monk. Wow. So that's like, you know, already started me off kind of, wow. a, kind of schizophrenic uh, <laughs> mindset. You know, Don Sternberg, who was here, used to have a really great line about, uh, he said, you know, I, he, would, he would always, <laughs> we would work together, Don, uh, you know probably where I'm going with this, but we were, we, not yet, <laughs> he would announce to the crowd that he just got a deal with Columbia Records, and everybody would be, you know, go, oh, that's so great, and he goes, yeah, it's so great, every month they send me a record, and then <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I like it, I keep it, and then if I don't, I just send it back, and they give me my... <laughs> but that was that, that was, was the it. thing, right? That was that was, that was, that that was the deal. deal yeah. that, so you had a deal with Columbia too. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So then Ron, so you uh, were <laughs> sorry to wake you. Um, so you were uh, in Champagne before these guys ever hit the scene, right? Yeah. Well, I, when I was in high school around Joliet. There was a session place, so I used to go and make a fool out of myself. Yeah. And um, 
and Joe Ferrantello, or Joe Ferrell, Ferrell wow. who is known in New York, um, came up there one night with a couple of his U of I buddies, and they played stuff that was so incredible, I thought, I think I'll go to college. <laughs> And, and the rest, I went to college for a long time before I ever got through it. But it was, uh, it was, it was good. It was good. And, and uh, you were, I, 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 forgive me for asking this, but uh, you know, you, I, I looked at, uh, looked at the background of you guys. By the way, Ron had this group called the, the Memphis Nighthawks, yes? Yeah. Am I correct? Is my, uh, I, yeah, yeah. Um, which was a traditional jazz band. Thing, and you've had a lot of hits on YouTube. I mean, a lot of people have watched those, but I, I have to tell you, 40% of them have been me. So, <laughs> just so you know that. <laughs> um, and I have to tell you one thing. Um, I mentioned Don earlier. Uh, in, the, in the 1993 or four, somewhere in there, um, I did a recording, a, a recording of some kids' music, and uh, it was the idea was to was to make jazz. Uh, kind of jazz for kids, and Don and I co-produced it, and Don, we, we decided we wanted to get a lot of really great Chicago jazz musicians on it, and one of the people that Don wanted to make sure to get on the record was Ron Duar. So Ron came and played his butt off, and it was a fantastic time, and, and uh, I was so thrilled to have him. I didn't know him at the time, but was thrilled to meet him and, and thrilled to have him, and I have to tell you this, that, that, after, that after we released that, and there are 20-some players on this record, um, I, I got a chance to meet Bob Kester, who was the guy that has the Jazz Record Mart and, um, uh, and Delmark Records. And, uh, and I was trying to tell him about this project that I just did, and he was sort of half listening. And I said, there's a lot of great jazz, Chicago jazz artists on there. And I, and I started listing them, and when I got to your name, he stopped me. And he said, you've got a record with Ron Duar on it? I need to own that record. So, I mean, that's the kind of... Uh, respect that, uh, that Ron gets around town. Um, I have to ask you about Elvis. What is the deal with Elvis? You played with Elvis? I saw that on a bio. Well, it was um, in the 50s, I had such extensive um, experience playing rockabilly, early rockabilly, um, that, that it sort of set me up for being able to read in the orchestra behind Elvis. And, oh, wow. Yeah. We had timpani and everything. No. So was he, was he coming through town, and you were part of a band? He was on a tour, and uh, I forget which. I thought it was in the late '60s, but the years sort of blend together. Yeah. Yeah. One of his last tours. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Um, Jim, you're going to be back here in a in a few weeks, right? With with Don. His trio. Am I? <laughs> Let me look at my calendar. Yes. Oh, good. So. Oh, good. I hope. I hope. Um, uh, we I, and and by the way, I, I need to thank Gina for. Uh, I know that she was. She helped uh, put this thing together. So thanks, Gina, for being spearheading this. And I also, uh, a little bird told me it's Fred Simon's birthday. Actually, Fred told me it's Fred Simon's birthday. So happy birthday to Fred. <laughs> And as a testament to all these guys, I mean, there are so many musicians in the audience, and that thrills me just as part of the series to have musicians come and hang out where this music is being made, and, uh, and obviously it's a testament to these, these uh, gentlemen. Um, I will uh, get out of the way. Do you guys want to play another one and take a break, or you want to take a break now? Your call. Uh, let's see, what do we have? Uh, let's see. Yeah, you want to play Will's? One tune. Yeah. One tune. We'll take a break. Please stick around. There's going to be a lot more music. And, um, and thanks so much for coming out, folks. And thanks, you guys, for such a great, great night. <laughs> An Elvis tune. Yeah. One more tune. Um, hang on a second. Uh, as Don would say, let me know when we get too slick. Here. Uh, there's, there's a tune written by um, Tom Adair and Matt Dennis in 1940. Um, they also wrote uh, Everything Happens to Me, one of my favorites, and Let's Get Away From It All. But yeah, there's a ton of tunes that they wrote um, 
some of my favorite songwriters. This is called Will You Still Be Mine. Actually, it's one I think I recorded with Don quite a while ago. Right, Don? That's correct. <laughs> 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 Thank mm -hmm. you. 
We'll take a little short break. Thanks. Please stick around, and there will be uh, much more music. And, uh, and take those little cards with you. And uh, if you want, sign up on a mailing list. We do stuff every week except next week. Happy Thanksgiving.
Thanks for sticking around, ladies and gentlemen. We, uh, just a reminder that there will not be a show next week. Obviously, it's Thanksgiving, so we won't be here next week. Hope you all have a great, uh, wonderful, and safe and fun Thanksgiving. Uh, I'll be in Wisconsin. Hopefully, I won't be shoveling. And uh, then the week after that, we've got John Mulder coming with, um, with Ken Hall, the great guitarist and vibes combination. It's, it should be really, they're both wonderful players. And, uh, and, and on and on through December. So take these little cards with you if you like. Um, my email address is on the back here. If you'd like to sign up for our, uh, you guys can come on up if you want. I'm just sort of filling. <laughs> um, my, my email's on the back here. You can sign up for our email list. Uh, I do send out a weekly sort of newsletter. Uh, I promise you I don't spam you. I don't share my list with anybody else. Uh, it's purely so you can um, be updated uh, once a week about what's coming. And usually I give a little something to click on. You can, uh, you can uh, listen to a little sample of some of the artists that's upcoming. Thanks again for coming out to support live music at Evanston. Uh, it's what we do for a living. And uh, truly, uh, it's your physical presence that makes this possible. And we really, we really do appreciate it. We're very grateful for it. And now, once again, let's hear it for Dennis Luxon, Jim Cox, and Ron Duar. Thanks, fellas. Thank you, thank you. I know Steve thanked uh, my uh, sweetheart earlier, but I just want to thank Gina for putting this together. Because I certainly would have, wouldn't have done it. But, uh, anyway. Uh, we're going to play... Um, Next, a song written by Walter, Walter Bishop. This microphone is moving. And I think around 1972, and uh, when I mentioned this song to Dennis, he said, oh yeah, that reminds me of Champagne. You know, it, it, when I first heard it, it reminded me of, again, summer youth music, I think, that Ron and the other teachers gave us this song to work on to learn how to play jazz. <laughs> what, what tune is this? Oh, uh, Coral Keys. <laughs> and it's funny that we we played it down in Champaign, and since uh, I moved to Chicago, I don't think anybody else has called this tune except for Dennis. <laughs> summer youth and summer old. <laughs> summer youth and summer old. Right. So here's Coral Keys by uh, Walter Bishop.
Thank you. Oh, thanks a lot. I don't know, where is Coral Keys? Is that in Florida? Does anybody know? No? <laughs> Probably warmer than here, is that what you said, Paul? Yeah. Um, okay, we have a, um, Ron picked out another beautiful Duke Ellington ballad that I've always loved. Um, I was thinking about this tune and thinking about harmonically, well, all these tunes, but how harmonically advanced it was for written, being written in um, 1940. Gorgeous melody called Warm Valley. And I've heard um, several theories about what he was writing about, what valley he was writing about, but I'm not sure which, which's. <laughs> what? Probably in Los Angeles or something, I think.
Gorgeous tune, huh? Well, on our, uh, our prepared song list, we only have one more song. We could um, just do a play something we like call something before we play this one. Unless, where's Steve? Where'd he go? Uh, should we stop soon? I mean, or. <laughs> Any standards you guys want to play, or in the worst way? Uh, what? Just stop to look and listen. No. <laughs> Star eyes? Did I hear? Star eyes? Star, Star eyes? <laughs> All right, we have a request for Star Eyes. I think from somebody, I sounded, that voice sounded familiar to me. <laughs> Three flats, is that okay with everybody?
going to say we really rehearsed that ending could you tell <laughs> I was thinking as, a, as I was playing that I don't you know want to hear these stories but I remember learning that tune from Ron <clears throat> when I was in you know at school like probably 1975 and Smith 25 Smith Music Hall <laughs> anyway sorry Oh. <laughs> well, now I have to find the music for our last song. Uh. <laughs> no tracks on that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it took you a long time to forget it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> oh, okay. Too much paper flying around up here. Um, so this is another Ellington tune. Um, I lost my notes. Oh, here they are. Oh, th there's a funny story about this tune. It's, the tune is called Drop Me Off at Harlem. <clears throat> I used to play this, or I played this um, with a um, wonderful drummer in town who recently passed away, Greg Sergo. He had a uh, band called the Ellington Dynasty. I remember playing that, playing this song in that band. The, the name of the song is Drop Me Off in Harlem. So the story I read, of course, on Wikipedia, sorry. Um, this guy named Nick Kinney was uh, getting a taxi home, and uh, he said to Duke, Duke, you know, you know hop, hop in with me. I'll get, you know, you can ride along. So Duke gets in the car, and Duke says, yeah, just drop me off in Harlem. So then Nick Kinney went home and he wrote lyrics to this song, and then Duke added the word, uh, the music, you know. So there you go. Interesting story. Um, I thought it was, at least. I don't know. Apparently nobody else did. <laughs>
Thank you. That's all the songs we know. Dennis Lexon, Jim Cox, Ron DeWar. What an incredible night. Thanks so much, you guys. This was really, really a Thank special you. evening. And thanks all of you for coming out on a cold night, supporting live music. And please do come back. We're here every Thursday, except for next week.